Algene. And how about this word? Oops. Uh, let's see here. This word is uh, yasuragi te. Perfect. Is the yasuragi, yasuragi te meant? meaning yes. I hide. Um, Tadori tsuku. What does that mean? Tadori tsuku uh, koro ni wa um, karada ga. Nikai ni tadori tsuku koro ni wa karada ga hiete kite katakata to furuete ita. Tadori tsuku. With, with every single step. Uh, Nikai. Nikai isn't all steps. It's what does Nikai mean? It's second, second step. Yeah. So second, to second, no, the no. second step. That is the destination. So koro so, around when we tadori took it to the second floor. Tadori, tadori. When we hurry up to the second yes, floor. Yes. Tadori tsuku means to arrive. Tsuku has, um, sorry, tadori tsuku. The tsuku kanji here is the same kanji from kurasu. Uh, I know it's not, never mind. Well, tsuku, to arrive. It's the arriving kanji, tsuku. Has a, I think it has another reading, but uh, it means to arrive. Um, when the tadori is here, it changes it from just um, tsuiteru or whatever, whatever arrive is. I can't remember on top of my head. I don't think it's a stuku normally. Um, the meaning basically means that you've basically you've uh, made something like fully done kind of idea. So here, the tadori tsuku is here because of the karada ga hiete kite. What does that mean? Um, karada ga tsume kite. Hiete kite. It is kite, but it's a verb, so it's pronounced differently. The body started to, or it comes to, it comes to be wet. That's a good guess. Uh, tsumetai means cold, and same with hieru, except for hieru is um, a verb. So it says, the body has become completely chilled around the time when I arrive at the second floor. So this right here is fully done when I arrive to the second floor. Kita is fully done. Hi, uh, kiru comes from the word tikta. And a lot of times this is used in compound words to kind of idea that you put the action at some point, meaning that it's it's um about 80% of the time, it means you've done the most you could possibly do of the action before it got cut. Um, you do have to kind of know the word because sometimes it'll have different meanings. Um, but in general, that's what kiru means. So hieru, to be chilled, plus kite basically means to be uh, totally chilled. It's not possible to get more chilled than the chill that has come, you've, you've, uh, we've cut at. We've cut at the point, there's no more chilling available. So it's like most chilled this. Yeah, kite. Hai, kite, kite. And what does tadori tsuku mean? Tadori tsuku is once upon arrival. Yeah. It specifically means to arrive. Upon, right, is koro, which is that noun that um is meaning around that time. Um, zei zei is a sound effect for wheezing, apparently. Like, going... <laughs> that's apparently zei. Not, not the sound I would choose. Hiccup would be, right, not wheezing. A little bit different. Um, this is difficulty breathing, zei zei? Yeah. Couldn't Panting, I guess, could be a way you could think about it. Zay, zay. Yeah, it's a nice sound effect. Do you know what teppen means? Teppen. Sounds like food. It does sound like food, but it has nothing to do with food. Uh, teppen means the very top of something. Can you read the bolded phrase for me? Bolded. Neburi wa teppen ga. The top of neburi. That's a good uh, guess. Um, but there's a relative clause here. 
So Nebiriwa and Tepenga are kind of separated. Tepenga, Tepenga, and then flat I... or even, e even rana. What is that kanji? How does it um, read here? Haira. Hai, hai. Hai, like a uh, hai, hai something. Haira na tsuba. Mm. Haira na tsuba. What does tsuba biroi mean? Tsuba hiroi. Hiro, hiro, why? And then tsuba is that like a like a cuff of your sleeves or is that a suba is like a you, horn so it's close to those you're right um suno is horn and uh sude is a sleeve but not for the sleeve does sound similar to i just can't remember on top of my head um this right here tuba is the bill of some kind of hat and biroi is letting you know it is very um wide so in this context that's it's like the whole um like you know like a flower hat what is this part of the hat called the brim the brim, the brim of the hat so that's basically what it's saying as a wide brim the bullshi does who the is kabuteri the bullshi the teppen or nebari who's um uh kabuteri uh, kabute is to put on. Right. So someone has to put it on, so it has to be neburi. Correct. So the tip in here is what's going on, is, which is really interesting, is that ad certain adjectives, this is more commonly in not adjectives, um, not adjectives are actually a little bit more like verbs than most noun and e adjectives, in that not adjectives can take a ga. A good example of this, right? is uh suki right sukina is a na adjective but you would say like inu ah, suki i like a dog so it's very common for these na adjectives to just have a subject so na adjectives are more like verbs than they are like adjectives sukina hito right a person that loves dogs inu ga sukina hito uh, haira na hai so yep this is taira um taira na so tight so teppen got taira na boshi what is a so it's a boshi that is being described as having what kind of quality so the boshi here we have firstly it's taira na um taira na tsuba the brim is flat i um so, yes Tsuba does mean brim. So that is theoretically possible. The na adjective could be describing tsuba, tsuba biroi. However, we already got teppen, teppen ga, right? This teppen is connected with tairana. So what does teppen ga tairana mean? Oh my. Tairana is an adjective. Right. That means flat. the flat top it is the flat top so would it make sense to say the flat top of the brim or would it make more sense to say the flat top of the bullshi oh the flat top of the bullshi right the flat top of the hat so what you did was grammarly correct this not can modify this verb right this noun here or it can modify this noun both are um, possible because they're both nouns. Um, a lot of times you'll see like a comma to make it more clear. Like if this was an E adjective, you would for sure see the comma to make it more obvious that we're skipping the tuba biroi. Um, but basically this right here has connected first. First we have, it is a hat with a wide brim. And then we added this relative clause afterwards. So, but both are possible. It is 100% grammarly possible for this to be it. It just doesn't make sense in context. Um, so same thing with English. The we I looked at three gorillas with, with binoculars. That either means I have binoculars and I'm looking at three gorillas 
or I'm looking at three gorillas and those three gorillas have binoculars. One of those sentences make more sense. Makes more sense to assume I have binoculars and not the three gorillas. But ambiguity exists in all, all languages. So that's the same with that. It could be either, but one makes more sense. Um, what does tarurituka mean? Oh, to arrive. It's yeah. a verb. How about zay zay? The sound effect acting as an adverb. Hi. To describe a difficulty breathing sound. Yeah, perfect. Can you read this word? This is iki. Hi. Or breath. Iki o kirasu. Hi. So here's a kirasu. Yeah, what do you think it means? Kirasu is a verb. Mm. And it has the cut character. Hi. So to hold your breath or to stop breathing. That is, it is to stop breathing. So holding your breath isn't insinuatedness. It just is to be out of breath, to gasp for air, to pant, to be unable to breathe well. Like your breath has been cut off. Right. Kirasu. Um, what is the te form of this word? It's a su verb. Uh, so it's rasu, rashite. Hi. Kiraste. Kiraste. Hi. Um, let's go read this line from the book. Kaidan no teppen ni tadori ku. Tadori tsuku. Tadori tsuku koro ni wa. Right when, around when, when arrive at the top of the stairs. Hi. Ore mo Benetto mo I as well as Benet ze ze to iki o kirashite ita we were out of breath and huffing to ze ze. So so. <laughs> hi hi. Do you know how to read this word? This is to arrive. It's to arrive. So it's kieta. Uh, good guess. So um, it, so kiru is how that kanji is read. When it's read as kiru, it means to wear clothes. That's what I was thinking about earlier. It is actually read as tsuku from tadori tsuku. It's read the same as that word. Yeah. Tadori tsuku. So it's actually um, tsuita. It's tsuku to arrive. Arrive at the building. Um, so then it's conjugated to suita. Right. Suita. Arrived. Had arrived. Perfect. And do you know how to read this word? This is like carriage. Something you carry. Hi. Luggage. Luggages. So it's kawamono. Good guess. It's uh, nimotsu. But... That does look like Kawa River, which is this kanji right here. And mono, of course, is how you can also read motsu, mono and motsu. So, super good guess, but it's just ni motsu. Ni, ni motsu. Motsu. Hi. Ni motsu. Uh, how do you read this word? Oh, ni motsu. So, it's like a merry reading. Mm, uh... Yeah, um, but the nimotsu isn't kawa, right? Kawa, kawa is this, and the ni from nimotsu, oh, nimotsu is that. So they're very similar, but nimotsu has the, the ni from nimotsu has the line thing at all. Nimotsu oh, iro. Oh, I guess you're right. It can be read as ka if it's a counter. So, so that might have been what you were doing. Um, wow. but, uh, when it when it's all by itself, you're right. It can be read as ka sometimes, like shuka. Never mind. I, I was like, uh -huh. I, I've never seen ka. You're right. <laughs> Shipment ka. That is possible. But yeah, here it's me. I think that makes it the unmarried reading, as weird as that sounds. 
because um, like Atsumeru, for example, becomes a uh, Tsuka. 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 Yeah. Well, it's a postfix sound. It's a prefix. It's a prefix. It's a prefix. It's a prefix. Good guess. It's, um, that can be read as sa, like in sagaru. However, this is o. Orosu. Orosu. To lower? Yes. To lower, I think. To orosu. Oroshi. So, to lower the baggage or to unload, is it to unload or to lower? To, to lower um, the baggage of the carts. The context, uh, so um, it is meaning li uh, literally to lower, but its meaning is used to mean to unload. To uh, unload. So, bo both are possible interpretations. Unload would make more sense in this context. Um, but both are possible. So you will use orosu if you had like nimotsu on a table and you wanted to orosu it down to oku it onto the floor. That would also be okay. You did, you, so I think English just has a special word for unloading, but that's not in Japanese. But basically, you had to pick it up and out of the hiroshiguruma. Yeah, yeah, yaseki, yaseki ni. The estate. Ah, uh, yashiki. Yashiki. Shiki. Nice. Now let's go read the sentence. It's the sentence from the book. Mommy, you taught me shiki last week, but I forgot what shiki mean again. Um, shiki means to cover. To cover. Yashiki. But altogether, it means mansion. Mansions. Not the estate, because the estate had the taku thing on it. Well, sorry. Yashiki is the estate. Um, mansion by itself is teitaku, because taku comes from otaku, which means home. But estate and mansion are kind of interchangeable in English. Like, we know the difference if you really, like, sit someone down and be like, the estate includes the mansion, but the mansion just focusing on the estate, but it doesn't, like, matter. <laughs> right? Uh, you just would choose what you would prefer to translate it as. Just, uh, Yashiki is referring to the whole grounds. Hi. Uh, yashiki ni um, so tsuku, tsuku from tarori tsuku. So yashiki ni tsuku to right when we arrive at the estates. Never veneto ga venet. He oroshi, he lower the nimotsu, uh, specifically the te oshiguruma no nimotsu. He lower the baggage of the cart, and I, orega, um, this here is like the kitchen, so it's dai dokoro, or dai basho, or something. Dai dokoro, your first reading was right. Dai dokoro e, I, I, um, and the verb here is like to carry. So it's funda, stu, funda, obu, obunda. Right. You're thinking about no. tsuku from tsu. Oh, it's obu, so it's unda. So, onda, is it? Mm -hmm. Hakobu? Ha Hakonda. Hakonda. So e to carry. So I carry it towards the basho of the uh Dai Dokoro. Perfect. Yep. In, in when we arrive at the estate, Annette he lowers the goods into my hands from the whatever cart, the pushy cart. Teoshi. Um, okay. Right, Wheelbarrow. Yes, tail sheet. Tail sheet. Tail sheet. Uh, how do you read Ima. this word? Mm, word. It had ima, and then it has the like the skin of an animal of some sort. 
That does look a lot like Kawa. That is a super smart guess. Um, we can change the color. Um, Kawa. Boop, 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 boop. Here it is. See how that's Kawa for skin. The word I here know. is Tabi from Tabini, which means times. So Tabi and Ima are both the single readings of this word. This word is um kind of married. So it starts with the sound kon. And what it ends with? Oh, kon. Kon. Tabini was what you say earlier, Moni? Yes, tabi? tabini is the unmarried reading of that kanji. Tabi, tabi. Imi. Right, so imi, sorry, ima. And tabi. Tabi. These two had a very nice wedding, so they had to change their name. Ima turned into Kon. What do you think Tabi turned into? Tabi become Dabi. That's a good guess, but that would be friends with benefits. Getting married means you fully change the meaning. It doesn't mean you add Rendaku. But that is a good guess because Rendaku is the other thing that can happen. But that would be Ima, right? That'd be Ima Dabi. Dabi. Right, right. Like we have hashi, it becomes bashi. That would be the you wouldn't they they should keep their relationships the same. So one kanji cannot be married to another kanji, and the other kanji cannot be like cheating on them, being like, oh, I thought we were just friends. And the other one's like, but we're married. That doesn't happen in Japanese. Um, you basically you have three things to choose from with the readings. It's either the kanji is being read as it's by itself. The kanji is read as if it's married. And the third one is the kanji is getting some kind of extra thing happening because they are friends with benefits. So that is going to be the rendaku. And also there is one special reading that happens with something. For example, aida. Do you know what aida means? Aida is a period. It's a time span. It is. Well, if it was married, if it was um, married, it becomes kan, like jikan. Just time, right? Just like Toki is the unmarried reading, right? Toki became Ji, and Aida became Han. The third special reading for Aida does exist, which is like Hiroma, which is a wide space. So Aida became Ma in this case. Um, so that does sometimes happen, but that's not the married reading, right? It's different than Kan. It's a fully different reading. So that's how you get those three readings sometimes. Most kanji only has two. Um, it's either going to be toki or it's going to be ji. Um, another example that has multiple would be like the jin and the nin, right? From uh, hito, the hito kanji. Red as hito, ni, jin, type of thing. So yeah, there's three possible readings. The married, by himself, friends with benefits. Hey. So here we have kondo. Hi, kondo. 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 Is, so yeah. So ichido means one time. What does kondo mean? This time. Yes. This time. Hi. Kondo wa bata o nukaroka. I wonder if I should next time, this coming time, cover it in butter. Um, can you read this for me? That is confusing. How do they know is the time currently or the upcoming time. They just kind of say it. Um. So the... It's the same in English. If you say the word next week, um, that could either mean this... Like, if I say, like, next week, Tuesday, and today is um Monday, most people will be like, uh, that would be the next coming Tuesday. But if you said next week, Tuesday, and it's Wednesday... That gets a little bit confusing. Are you talking about this coming Tuesday or the Tuesday after that? <laughs> so you, you kind of can just tell by context. Um, Hondo is, um, you can't really say it after you've done an action. So you're either doing the action right at this moment. You've just begun the action. So that means the upcoming thing is this next time. Or it's later in the day, you'll be doing it later. So it's only the only thing that is vague is whether or not it's happening in 
one second or if it's happening in five days. Hi. Hi. Do they ever use suki? The next, the word suki for next? Sugi? Sugi? Um, yeah, tsuki is used for next. It's just used in a different context. Um, tsuki wa bato nukaro. Um, if you said that sentence, that makes you feel kind of robotic like is how I would explain the difference. That sounds like you had a agenda on your list and you wrote, okay, the next step is putting butter on top of my thing. Um, but that's not really what he's saying here. He's thinking right now, mm, I'm going to go do this. Kondo is a lot more emotional than Tsugi. Um, so like, it just means like this, like, so Kondo is like, this time I'll work for sure. You wouldn't really use Tsugi in that sentence. Or this time I'll work for sure. Um, because Tsugi just next is this. So Tsugi is more robotic, has doesn't have enough emotion for the goal sentence with this like nukaro kana. You can tell he's really like fantasizing about what he's gonna be doing with his food. Ooh, I'm gonna go slay there in a butter. I think that sounds like a good idea. Um so you could use Tsugi in like a different context. It just as I said, sounds more robotic. Doesn't really have that emotional touch. Um, can you read this word for me? Um uh nido nidoka. That's a good guess. So that first kanji, I'm pretty sure it only has one reading and then one slurring. What is the reading of the first kanji? Um, I think it's mean to carry, right? No, oh, you're talking no, about no, no. nimotsu. So it's it, not it, the ni from Nimotsu. Do you know what it this is? This for like a question word. Yes, it's nani. Nani, nani. So nani, nani. is going to be read as either nani or it's going to be slurred as na. But I... it's it's not really a separate reading. It's like the rendak. It's just kind of a slurring going on. So this is either going to be uh, nani doka or nan doka. Which one do you think is easier to say? Nan doka. Hi, nan doka. Yes, that is much, much easier to say. Um, what does nandoka mean? Any idea? Nandoka is a question phrase. It means how much of something or how many of something or what is the it's, degree of it, something. So you are almost correct. That'd be nando. Ka is really interesting because you're right. Ka is normally a question marker. But when you're using ka to modify a question word, it fully changes the meaning, right? Like nanika, right? That doesn't mean um, a question of a thing. This is the word something, nanika. It is the what is being um, insinuated as a what that exists, right? Just like the easiest one to do is doko, which is where, because you can add ka or after that becomes somewhere, right? Doko, doko ka, somewhere. It is a where that is not defined, but does exist. So nanika is a what that is not defined, but does exist. So nandoka is the amount of times that is not defined. So depending on context, you might say like um, um, several times might be a way you translate it. We have a undefined amount of times something existed. It should be more than one time, but it's uh, it just means like, the times have not been defined. So several. Kind of like ikutsu. Ikutsuka. It becomes like that. So nandoka is um several times. Sometimes. Exactly. Do you know how to read the bolded word here? Tabe. Um finish. Oh 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 Hi. It's tabe oe. So it does look like okiru. You're right. Okiru, which is this guy. But it's oe. What does tabe oeru mean? It means to finish eating. Hi. Perfect. Oe. Oe. Do you know how to read this bold word? It does. The, like your tabi, your wallet, your... Um... It is closer to wallet than um the other words are saying. This means back bag it's um Whoa. i forgot fukuro fukuro hai do you know what a tebukoro is 
Tebukuro is your wallet. That's a good guess. That's Saifu. Tebukuro is a bag that covers your hand. What do you think that is? It's a glove. It is a glove. Tebukuro. So yeah, wallet is Saifu. Totally different kanji, but similar in like idea. Because a lot of like old fashioned Japanese like wallets kind of look like little baggy. They're little baggies. Right, like the coin purse and stuff are all bags. Um, yeah, this right here just says Dorobo no fukuro no naka no yo na makura no yoru. A night as dark as the insides of a thief's bag. Um, do, 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 do. How do you read the bolded word here? Uh, Nikita. Suita. Suita. Hi, Twita. Perfect. And how do you read the bolded word here? Kondo. Wa. Kondo. Hi, Kondo. Wa. This time. And... Um, how do you read this word? Uh, hakobu. So it's Hakobi. Hakobi. Hi. Oeru. Perfect. What does hakobi oeru mean? To finish uh, transporting it. Hi. Perfect. Let's go read this line from the book. Nando ka yuki iki iki arrive is um iku become iki and then arrive is a uh, kuru this kuru um so is but uh, here it's like ikiki iki ki shite right and kuru become kiste uh, what's going on here is that ikiki is a noun, and we've just added suru afterwards. Um, ikiki wasn't taught just because it's a, you can guess the meaning by the kanji. Iki, suru. So to go to the destinations, right, Moni? To arrive. And what does kuru right? mean? To arrive. Mm -mm. To go and to arrive. Uh, you're thinking about tsuku. Tsuku is to arrive. Do, do, do. Looks like this. This oh. is kuru. Kuru is to come back. Yes. Iki, to iki, go iki. and to come back. Exactly. To go, the come and go. Come and go. Hi. Okay. So he's saying that he, he he comes and goes several times. Hi. And he he, he finished transporting. Hi. Hakobi oeru to. And when that happened, daidokuro wa uh the fu fuk f um the ba the bag is um fukuro hai fukuro to uh the bag and the um what was it like a bamboo thing or like a close like a it does look like take you were a hundred percent right uh -huh. take is uh right here um I swore bamboo looked a lot more like that, but they have the same little top parts on it. And a lot of times a hako is made out of take. You know what a hako is? Um, what was it like a like like a laundry thing? I forgot. Like the word is laundry. Me. It just means box. A box. Hey. So the fukuro and the hako. Um and eh. Dachike ni natta. Of to to wrap tsu, tsu, something. Hi, tsu 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 means to wrap, and tsu mi turns that into a noun. So it means wrappings, like wrapping paper, things like that. Then we have the word darake. Darake is really similar to ipai. What do you think darake means? It means lots of 
Yes, it does mean lots of, be full of something. How are ipai and darake different? Ipai is full of good things. Darake right. is full of bad things. Exactly. Perfect. So what happened to the kitchen? It's filled up with junk. Exactly. With, with guru and with hako. Right. With bags, boxes, and wrappings. Then that last bit is not a become not that. So right. it's, it's saying that it can't it became that. Yes. The it comes, it comes to be to be full. Full of stuff. Exactly. Right. Perfect. Can you read the bolded word on this page? Here is uh, it's uh, like the lower back with the Hi. hip. Yes. Which is uh, forgot what how it reads money. Boshi. Boshi. Ko. Boshi. Koshi. Hi. Boshi is a hat. Koshi. Hi. Boshi is. A... Hi. Koshi is the lower back. So soft. Oh. Um, do you know what atere means? Atere. I'll give um, you the kanji. So it's teru come from aru. Uh, oh, it's to hit. Hi. To or to arrive or to to get. All right. It's in between arriving and hitting. It is to come into contact with. <laughs> so a lot of the times it is used to mean hit. That's like the most common. Use, I would say, especially when you first start Japanese. But then you'll see random other uses that it says, I touch this to this. For example, here it says, Sono kagishi o jo ni oshi ateru, which is, I push, right, oshi, the magical stone against, that's ateru, the, 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 the lock, right, to push against, oshi ateru. Ateru is really only talking about the contact point, which if you're hitting something, you made contact with them. Um, so you also will use it metaphorically, meaning you you got something right because you you touched on the right idea, which is what we might say. Maybe. So yeah, or you got you got it, or you got it correct. Exactly. So I did it. But you here is, it. is kagi, right, Moni? The keys is kagi. Uh, hi, kagi ishi no kagi is keys. That is up here, kagi. And right here is Joel. That so, that key rock it is pushed against the lock. The lock. The Joel. Hi. Hi. Okay, let's go read this line from the book. So nebri wa nebri wa koshi ni te o atte ehi. He put, he put his hands on his lower back. Right. Daidokoro o sato. Again, the sato is an adverb. Hi. Uh, mi wa ki... mi mawashiteru? Hi. Mi mawashiteru. He sato, meaning he right away? Or Hi. Is it quickly he quickly. Um, It's more quickly than right away. Sato. He runs, but no running. Uh, uh, so, Benetto put his hands on his back, and he, he, what did he, he, he look around? He Hi. look around the kitchen? Yes, right he away? looks around the kitchen, and he does this in a very, well, it's not right away, right? This is um more of the speed in which he does this survey. He does not do a slow little crawl, checking every single corner. Instead, he starts in one corner, goes to the other side. He does a quick little survey. So the zato is more talking about how long he was mimawasuing, rather than how long it took him to start mimawasuing. The a... dictionary form of this verb is mima. Instead of wa, it would have been like yes. an ma wasu, verb, right, Moni? Right here is the verb. Um, ma wasu. Uh, this is a compound verb combining miru, which is a do verb. So stem form is mi. Just like how um, yomu means to read, but you might say yomi ageru to mean to read out loud by taking the mu into mi, which is stem form. 
So me, it's like really confusing because it's a new verb. So it just gets the me left over. Um, and then you'll add another verb to it, like mawasu, which means to do a turn, to go around, to survey something. So it's very similar to if you added watasu here, which means to go across. So this is to send your eye across something. Um, they they would be basically the same in English here if you said zato mi mawasu. Um, yeah, turn to Let's go wash. visit everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Looking around, Sasato, quickly. Mm -hmm. I, I can't you check. Oh, what does Padori Tsuka mean? To arrive, Tarori Suke. Perfect. And how do you read this word? It's a yashiki. Perfect. And how about this one? Na nimotsu. Hai nimotsu. How about this one? Is nando ka. Some, Perfect. Something. How about this word? Fukuri. Fukuro. Ro. Fukuro. Sounds a lot like the word for cloud. Um, owl. Can you read this word? Hako. Hai, hako. Perfect. Um, do you know what unaru means? Unaru. Te o koe de unaru. Hai. Nebude ga te a hikui koe de unaru yo ni. So he whisper. It is whispering a little bit, um, in this context. Unaru. Um, but unaru doesn't mean whisper in its own. Unaru is a um, uh, like a grumbly noise. Normally, it can be from a human or a animal mouth. Um, but it's just like a very low tone of rah, 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 rah. so it's a lot like chubayaku more than um sasayaku, right? So chubayaku versus sasayaku. So if you're doing unaru, you can chubayaku with that, but you can't sasayaku with unaru because unaru has that rah, 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 kind of sound, um, like Charlie Brown's teacher. Uh, is not doing. They're not sasayakuing. Um, with what it though, those, what are those two ku verb money? Are those both yes. verbs? They are both or are verbs. Adverbs? Sasayaku is a verb which has this kanji, and tsubuyaku. Uh, oh, tsubuyaku. Has this kanji. So, tsubuyaku in English would be to mutter. To mutter. Sasayaku in English is to whisper. How are whispering and muttering different? Whisper is like a very lower volume. You reduce yeah, the volume. It's a lot harder to hear. It's a lot um, breathier, I, I think, is the more like the. Sasayaku. And then yeah. to mutter would be more of that crackly voice. Like you're muttering a little bit today, though I can hear you very well, just like because I can tell you're tired. But when you're tired, you're more likely to tsubuyaku when you're talking and the unaru a little bit than the sasayaku. Because you're not, you're, you're not talking a low voice, but you're just kind of tired. So you got the low. Or sometimes tsubuyaku is more likely to happen if you're grumpy. Because it's like a murmur, murmur, murmur kind of sound. But unaru in itself is just talking about that kind of... Um, so if you're unaruing, you probably can't really hear what they're saying. Um, so here it just says... Um, so I can hear Nebuti saying something, and he is saying something in a way that is in a hikui goi. What does hikui goi mean? Hikui goe, a low voice. 
yes, a low voice that is kind of grumbly. It's kind of, um, gr- yeah, <laughs> kind of grumbly is basically what it means. But the idea when you see it in Nadu, you normally cannot tell what somebody is saying versus Tsubayaku, you're more likely to get actual, like, quote, like what they're saying. I muttered, oh, I hate this teacher, right? That kind of idea, that'd be more muttering. Well, but Nadu is more like, you don't really get the vocab words from it um do you know how to read this word um so that does look like the word for you're right but this is actually this is actually what shows up in gohan like um, asa gohan, which is breakfast. Han. However, han from asa gohan, when it's on its own, is read as messi. Me- messi. So this is as messi, which is a meal. Well, tabedu is to eat. Um, so messi ni suru doesn't mean really let's eat. Messi ni suru means Shall we cook? Shall we put into food being made? Um. So let's go read this line from the book. Meshini suru to tazu ne tara tazu ne tara veneto ga ore no ho o mite. I think I got it wrong. No, it's Not hiku. Hiku. This is hiku. It's a adverb. It is hard because unaru here doesn't have kanji. So it feels like, is this, is this a one word thing? But now it's a adverb and a verb. To um, mumble low with a low with a low mumble. Uh, he looks at me whole. He looked towards me. Ore no ho. Veneto ga. He looks at me and he mumbles something. Yes. In um, English, we might use the word grunt in this context. Um, because there's lots of words to pick, right? Um, just to be like, well, something isn't in the sentence, so. Grunting can work. That's the same kind of idea, right? <laughs> that that's a grunt. The it is a first... low tone, rumbly noise that you can't tell what they're saying. <laughs> the first part, Moni, I say meshini tsuru is I... shall we make a meal? Is that what yes. it meant? That is what it means. And then followed by to tazu ne tara. What does I... that mean, Moni? So let's break this off. Ho is occurring right after that. What does that make this toe into? Do you know? It's, it's a quote. Yes, we quote, have a quote. quote. So now we have tazune tara with a comma. Does tara sound familiar? Tara? Tara, tara here is if. It is when. if. So that means our verb here is tazune ta, which is tazune du. Tazune du. Um, tazuneru, it's been a while, but tazuneru means to ask. To ask, tazuneru. Right. So tazuneru. this if here, since it's in past tense, when is a little bit better. So when I asked, shall we make food? Benet, he looked at me and went, <clears throat> he did something like that. Wait, is that a yes? Is that a no, Benet? Why is Benet? <clears throat> Is he like he never liked Khan? No. Ever since I started reading, I haven't seen him treat him nicely. Yeah, Benet was not in a good mood at all for over a while. He he's a classic like grumpy bodyguard character, being like, "Why is this street rat in this house?" <laughs> Benet gets under character development though. Behind he gets he gets better eventually. <laughs> um, can you read uh this kanji? Here we have Hanase. To Perfect. separate. To separate. Um, what, about, what does nagurareta mean? Nagurareta. Say de. 
I don't remember this. Nagurareta is So we have a Nagurareta. What do you think that is? It's mean that is either he could do this Nagu thing or he's he's receiving this Nagu thing. Yes, you're right. Action. There is the passive and potential form can be very similar. So that means you can assume this right here is a ru. Naguru. Let's go look at the kanji. Naguru. Oops. Naguru. Does that look a little more familiar? Naguru. A hit. Yes. Naguru is a hit. So nagurareta means to be hit because naguru um, is a u verb rather than a du verb. So potential form would be um, redu. But no way to tell just by looking at it, being this, like, is this what's that? Well, that this, this kanji for hitting, it looked like a smashing, more like a hard, very hard hit, like a smash. Uh, yeah, I I would say so. Um, it's a like, it's a solid hit is probably what I would describe it as. Like, um, versus like. Atharu. Like Ataru, right? Ataru is just contact. Um, if you hit something with Ataru, you're not really focusing on the hit, but more on the contact that's being made. So whether or not that's like a solid hit or not isn't really insinuated in it at all. Versus Naguru, which is very much um it's like the best way to describe it, just a solid hit. Um Utsu also means the hit. This is more like uh like if you hit the drums, like that kind of ba 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 kind of feeling. What's it? That's another to hit somebody to strike. Um so like the we do have different little hittings. Um we'll skip that. Um let's go read this line from the book. Matanak. Matana. Good guess. Nagarareru. Mata naga nagurareru. It's hitting. It's hit. One more time. Hit again. Or still hitting. No wa. Iyada. Iyada ta no de. It was bad. It was not good. Um, chiri chiri to hanareta. Right. So iya is like interesting with like how the different kind of negation words in Japanese kind of work, right? Like chotto is what you'll see in like native Japanese, and you're saying, mm, "That's not very good. I I can't do that." Well, iya might show up in a right. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh. Yeah. yeah, that's the yeah versus hi, right? Hi, yeah, yes, no, and then you'll see like choto mean like not good. Well, there's also ya and dame, but it's a little bit different. Um, dame is a little bit closer. What you're thinking here, if it said dame, that means like that's no good, which is a way to say no. Ya, if you're using ya to say no, that is horrifying. Yeah, is extremely aggressive. It, it does mean no, but it's like um, this is what the anime girl screams when the boy walks in her when she's in the bathroom. She goes, Eek! and then she grabs something and throws it at him. Right? This is a very emotional word. She doesn't go, eh, and then <laughs> so it's like so. Yeah, is like dame, but yeah, is just so much more aggressive. So here. This would be better translated as kirai. Kirai, to hate something. So this yada, it, it does mean it's a no no, but it's like, it's, but in English, in this specific sentence, it's like, I'd hate that. That is it's a horrible thing. That's horrid. It's, it's, it's the most aggressive no. If, if someone asks you, could you go out with me? You said, yeah. You <laughs> basically said you're kimoi. <laughs> Gross. Uh, hey, it's, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, it's like gross. Yeah, is disgusting or something like that. Horrifying, exactly. Yeah, that that no there because it was because I don't like it. That's what he said. Yeah, exactly because I don't like 
being. So this is like a hard sentence, but it's like, but basically here he says, I would not like it, I guess. Like there's no wood in here, but that's how we'd have to do it in English. Um, yeah, that's another. But he's saying while he was being hit, right? Oh, no, no. He that's say, a good guess. To be hit one more time. Right. He hates Because it's saying no what? Like almost as exactly. if a couple. Like the thing of being hit one more time. Yes. Um, is no good and I wouldn't like it. Exactly. So I chiri chiri to hanare tai. I back up a little bit. I chiri exactly. chiri meaning like a little scoot scoot. He's exactly. Exactly. He's, he's, just, he's it perfect. Yeah. Um, because I'd hate to be hit once again, I started scooting away. So in English, you just say saying, I'd hate, right? I'd is past tense. Boop, boop. Um, do you know how to read this kanji here? To make. Sukuru, right. sukuru. What's the imperative form? Imperative. Sukute. Oh, that's te form. Te which form, is no. a order as well. That is correct. But imperative Imper form. Is a fancy another yes good old. So tazuneru, what did that mean? We just saw that word not that long ago. Tazuneru. Um, it was meshini suru. Oh, tazunetara. Ah, uh, to ask, to inquire. It is to ask. Perfect. What is the passive form of tazuneru? Tazura. Perfect. And how do you read this word? Shokudo. Good guess. It is same, it's kind of meaning, right? Shokudo. It also means food. Um uh, cafeteria. This is um Oh, something uh, ryohin. Yes, it's a uh, shokuryohin. Shokuryohin. It's mean like, um, like food products or ingredients. Exactly, that is what it means. Shokuryohin. And sorry, how do you read this word? That is koshi. The back. It does look like koshi, but it's not koshi. Oh. What is it I'm far away? This means stomach. Uh it's um hara. It is hara. Perfect. It is hara in that sense context. Do you know what unazuku means? That is good to to, to grumble. Is to mm, like, super, blah, blah, super blah, blah, blah. close. Um to bu yaku is to grumble. This is unazuku, which um I also will when I was first learning the word get them confused with each other. Unazuku is to um nod. Wait, what's the other unaru? The other one is unaru. unaru. Yes, unaru is to grumble to well to make rumbly noises. This one is unazuku. Uh, hi, super similar. It's That's that kanji. Exactly. Unaru. Okay. If only they had the kanji, I feel like it'd be easier to tell a difference because Unazuku has like that kanji from like Atama in it. Hi. Right, a little. Definitely. Thing. Versus uh, Unaru says like you're making Unaru. sounds, and I can tell right now in my heart that it has meaning, but I can't Unaru. understand it with my ears. Unaru. Unazuku. Hi. When Perfect. Not. Yeah, so let's go read it from the beginning. This will be our last sentence from the day. Hey, Haraga Haraga Heta Noka. Um I'll come back to it. Okay. Mm. Uta Zune Rare Ta no de Unazuitara Venet. Beneto wa to buy or to sell. Uh, kate kita. Shukuri yo hin o. 
to point with the finger. Hi, okay. what's finger? Um. Oh no, money. You be forgetting. You be sashita. Jibun de skare. Good. Oh, sorry, I guess it's to get that scroll. Good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. There's three ways. There's three ways to have an imperative verb in Japanese: te form o and re. Yeah. Right, um. Yeah, I'm checking that. I mean, uh. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. I feel like uh, I heard skittle before the, too. I know, I feel like I did too, but that must be like incorrect. It must be like from something else because it's interesting. I felt like yo was the new verb version, but it must be new verbs become yo, and then u verbs you add um edu eh. Uh, so. Sorry about that. I should have known that. Verb? Sorry. Uh, I feel like it's a rubber, right? No, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. That makes it into an u verb. It has a u at the end, but it's r plus u, not. So, um, for example, taberu. Taberu becomes tabero. And in my head, I thought it was tabeyo, but that's volational form, so that's why I didn't do it. <laughs> so yeah, I just... do 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 do. Oh, what are you... It's dark in my head. The lights turned up. Um, oh, tabeyo. Hi 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 hi. So yeah. hara ga hetta. Hara ga hetta. This uh, means made... hungry. Hi, ka. He's saying, are "You hungry?" Exactly. <laughs> this guy, he's such a mean, mean ohm. He, I'm guessing he's middle age, right? Yeah, he's in, but so like never he's super old. That's a little bit younger. Fed enough to beat someone up, and Khan's the youngest. Yeah, he's grumpy. He's he's hare hare ga heta no ka. You hungry? To ta zune rare. Oh, he's asking. He's inquired. I, I was asked. I was asked. Because I was asked, I nodded. When I nodded, the net. Um, he cut the kita. Yeah, that's a relative clause right there. Oh. He, uh, he cut the kita, the shiro shokuri yo hi o o, uh, tabi. Yubi? Ta, yubi. Sashita. He pointed at the goods that was bought. Hi. Exactly. And he basically say, make it yourself. Exactly. Good. 